Sports men and women are obsessed with numbers. The fastest, the longest, the closest. International sport is so highly competitive and top sportsmen and women are so evenly matched that anything that gives a competitor even the slightest edge could mean the difference between winning and losing. In fact, it's not just the competitors, but scientists and mathematicians that are also battling for first place. If you fancy your chances as an Olympic swimmer, hard work, good diet and dedication to training are things you might think you'd need. Computational fluid dynamics is unlikely to be on your list. Yet this mathematical technique has caused world record times to tumble. Moving liquids are governed by a collection of non-linear partial differential equations. Computational fluid dynamics, or CFD, is a common technique used for designing ships and aeroplanes. But using CFD to tailor swimsuits? Surely that's a joke. Not so. The so-called supersuit that scientists have come up with makes an astonishing difference to the drag forces experienced by a swimmer in the water. In fact, there have actually been complaints that swimming is becoming less about the swimmers and more about the suit technology. Even without a supersuit, Jamaican athlete Usain Bolt stunned commentators by sprinting 100 metres in a mere 9.69 seconds in the 2008 Beijing Olympics. A year later, he reduced the time to 9.58 seconds. This has prompted biological scientists to ask what the ultimate limit might be. Clearly there must be one. Muscles and lungs are mechanical devices and can only work so fast. Mark Denny at Stanford University has developed a mathematical model of running, taking into account factors such as training, diet and genetic makeup. Currently he's predicting a limit of 9.48 seconds for the 100 metre dash, which works out to a speed of 23.6 miles per hour. Back in 1964, high jumper Dick Fosbury set a new trend at a new Olympic record when he started jumping over the bar backwards. Previously, athletes had initiated the jump by straddling the bar with one leg forward and then rolling the rest of the body over. Fosbury realised that jumping backwards, he'd get his upper body over first and then flick his legs up afterwards. When you do the maths looking at the movement of the athlete's centre of mass, the advantage becomes clear. At first, the Fosbury flop was ridiculed, but now they're all doing it. Have you ever thought about the sporting venues themselves? Mathematicians certainly have. Long before a stadium is constructed, the structure is carefully analysed to make sure it's up to the required task. One of the biggest problems is the design of the roof. It's got to be strong enough to withstand wind and rain, possibly even snow, but it's got to be light enough not to require lots of supporting columns that would obscure the spectator's view. Then there are the spectators themselves. What happens to the floor when they all jump to their feet and applaud at once? Structural engineers are using mathematical skills to predict not only the behaviour of the building, but also the behaviour of the people within it. So next time you see a major sporting event at maybe Wembley or the Olympic Velodrome in London, just pause for a minute and think about all the clever mathematics that have gone into making that event possible.